We got some questions on the show about who's coming back in 2024, plus Jim Harbaugh. We got Michigan, Alabama. This is going to be a great mailbag here as we're just days away from the Rose Bowl, biggest game in Michigan football history. And we are presented by Manscaped. I love Manscaped products. I've got the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra in my hand. I've got all of Manscaped products, uh, and I got it with 20% off and free shipping by using promo code GOBLUE, G-O-B-L-U-E, no spaces, at manscaped.com. Use that promo code, get yourself 20% off and free shipping. Let's take it before we start uh, into your questions. I want to talk about an update on who's leaving, who's coming back, right? No matter what happens, I think Michigan's going to be in a good spot next year with Kenneth Grant, with Mason Graham, with uh, Will Johnson, of course, with Colston Loveland, uh, a lot of offensive linemen coming back, probably uh, you know Ernest Hausman. But Michigan could be the number one team in the country next year if J.J. McCarthy and some of these guys come back, or they could have a mass exodus end up replacing like 13 or 14 stars. I got a little scoop over the last couple of days. Tell you what I know. We're going to go through all the players who could leave or stay. But I'm going to make you this deal. Put the vibes. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is the time. I put. Uh, I went to one of these uh, these people who was a fortune teller's Jack, and she said the number of subscribers you get from your mailbag video going out on Friday. That's how many points Michigan's going to score against Alabama. It worked in 2021 against Ohio State. It's got to work now against Alabama. So subscribe to the channel. Put out the good vibes if you were a Michigan football fan. So who's out of eligibility for this team? Mike Sanderstol, uh, Michael Barrett, coming back for, you know, their fifth year Sanderstol, six-year guy for Michael Barrett, redshirt, COVID year. Cornelius Johnson played five years. Ladarius Henderson, six years, three schools. Now, we've actually got some, some you know, there's some conflicting information. So if I got this wrong, I'll, I'll you know, eat it. But I, from reading what I've read and seeing his playing, you know, career, Josh Wallace has another year of eligibility, right? He's got a COVID year. He's got a four-year redshirt. Uh, four-game redshirt year, but others are saying that uh, he's out of eligibility, but I haven't heard it from him directly, so if you see it coming up and ultimately turns out to be wrong, then uh, it is what it is, but who is likely to go, right? Guys who could come back next year, but are likely to go uh, and head out to the NFL. A couple of these are different than previous weeks. Chris Jenkins, I think it's a no-brainer, but how about these next couple of these next ones? Jalen Harrell, two-year start at the defensive end, 2022, 2023, he actually has two years of eligibility left, right? He's a fourth-year player, but got the COVID year, got a redshirt year. He could come back, but hearing that he's not going to, he thinks it's going to be a third, fourth-round draft pick. He's had enough of college, wants to go to the pros. Trevor Keegan, not surprising. I don't think Roman Wilson's surprising. He could come back. Blake Corum could come back if he wanted to. Uh, he's got the COVID year as well. Zach Zinter, I thought there was a chance he could come back, but he has uh, publicly said that he will be uh, heading out. Uh, Junior Colson. I think is a new one, and so is Braden McGregor, right? A few weeks back, we did this, and I said, those guys are likely to stay. What I'm hearing lately is that those players are likely to go. Even though Junior Colson is not being projected as a first or second rounder, I think he's more like, there's going to have a lot of guys mid to late second round, like fifth round, you're going to hear like 12 or 13 Michigan players uh, picked. I don't think they're going to have any first rounders unless it's J.J. McCarthy, maybe Chris Jenkins, but we will see. Now, who's likely to return? Now, Josh Wallace. I, this is where I, I haven't got the intel. I, the person who gave me this info was like, I, you're, you got a good question there, James and Wall. So we'll have to find out. Uh, I'll update this as soon as I know for sure. But if he has another year of eligibility, he will come back. Makari Page as well uh, will be his you know, second and a half year starting next year if he comes back. Josiah Stewart uh, returning for fourth year in college, second year in Michigan is what I think is going to happen. A.J. Barner as well. Drake Nugent. Has another year of eligibility. And then Miles Hinton, right? Uh, so two guys, Nugent, a starter. Hinton has been a starter at times for this program. Right? Gotta love that extra COVID season. You gotta love it. Um, Michigan, I know some people say, oh, Michigan's got 40 seniors. That's all six-year guys. That's not true. Michigan, as far as, uh, you know, if anyone says that, they've only got a few few six-year guys on the entire team. Right? Michael Barrett uh, is a six-year guy. Um, Ladarius Henderson, six-year guy. I don't know if there's another one now. Uh, Mike Singer still's in the COVID season. Quinnius Johnson's in a COVID season. That's pretty much it, though. Right? You're not having five and six-year guys all over the field. Now, it could happen again next year. You might get a few guys, more players like that, Josh Wallace, et cetera, if he could return. But that's really not the case that Michigan's using a bunch of six-year COVID guys like the haters from Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, et cetera, will like you to believe. Now, it's a toss-up for these guys. Uh, I wish I had better intel. Uh, I put JJ, I think, did we have him a few weeks ago, Jack, as likely to return? The toss-up as well. J.J. McCarthy, although I'm leaning more towards leave. I think it's actually going to come down. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's good and it's bad for Michigan fans in both ways. If he plays well and really tears it up against Alabama, he's going to go to the pros. If he doesn't, he might not get the draft position he wants if he's going to come back. So, you know, you're kind of going to win and, and lose either, either scenario. But uh, I'd probably rather take it that he beats Alabama, 
goes to the national title game. We lose him next year. Uh, I'd rather take that than have him back and hope that we make it back to this point again. Uh, Diamond Edwards, toss-up. I'm actually hearing more that he might actually leave, which I think is a bad idea because I think it would be a fifth or fourth-round draft pick unless he absolutely tears it up in the combine or something. Carson Barnhart, toss-up return. I think he will return. Uh, and then Rod Moore, toss-up as well. Three-year starter, only a three-star coming out of high school, but he has turned into a hell of a player. Had he not been injured for three or four games this year, uh, I think he definitely would have gone, but uh, you know, had a, had a nice return. And if you guys remember, sealed the game with an interception against Ohio State. Let me ask you guys this question. Does J.J. McCarthy declare for the 2024 NFL Draft? He's got till June I'm sorry, January 15th to do so. So he has, you know, 20 days or so, 18, 19 days so far. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Go down in the comments and reply. I'll make sure this is the pinned comment beneath the video or the live chat. Give me a Y or an N. Once you come back up, you'll be ready to go with more Michigan football content. But i got to do this ad read from our sponsor, Manscaped. I absolutely love Manscaped. I'll tell you what, Jack. If I didn't have Manscaped, I don't know where I'd be in my personal life in the bedroom because it takes care of things, and it's going to take care of you. In 2024, you have confidence thanks to Manscaped, where resolutions are met and hairs are neatly kept. As the new year approaches, why not make self-improvement a breeze by keeping your body well-groomed? Introducing Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra, the ultimate all-inclusive kit designed to help you feel clean, cut, and confident as you should. We love the, the, the Manscaped products here at the Michigan Football Report. It features, by the way, it features the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, which is the next-gen trimmer that ensures precision and ease when tackling your toughest hair. So kick off 2024 with a trim above the rest using code GOBLUE, that's G-O-B-L-U-E, at manscaped.com. Get yourself 20% off and free shipping. We sent out some Manscaped products to a few viewers. We've got Ace of Spades. Uh, we've got Jacksonville Zoe we sent one out to. Get going 20% off and free shipping. You saw those products right there, right? They're throwing in the Boxers 2.0. Super silky comfortable. They're amazing. And then the thing I never travel without, which is the Shed 2.0 toiletry bag. Puts all my stuff in there. Got a little handle. Boom. Can fit right in the bottom of my carry-on. Resolutions may come and go, but a well-groomed you is here to stay with Manscaped's latest and greatest products. Link is in the comments and the description. And in the live chat, manscaped.com, you got to use promo code GOBLUE for 20% off and free shipping. Keep things rolling here on the show with more Michigan football burning questions, right? We just asked you, will J.D. McCarthy declare for the NFL draft? I'm going to go with yes at this point. Uh, I think he's going to play well against Alabama, and his stock will kind of go right back up to the top. Got some questions, though, from the audience. Bill Graves saying, if we beat Alabama, who would you want to play for the national title and why? Uh, that's a pretty simple question. I don't have to think about this too long. I would rather play Washington uh, for a few reasons. The why, geographically, the game is in Texas. You would have 75% uh, Texas fans there, I would guess, because it's it's a drive, right, for almost everybody that uh, lives in the state of Texas. So that's one. Number two, Texas has higher-level talented players across the board, all right? Um, and then, you know, the third one being that uh, I think Michigan can beat both of these teams, but... Um, I like Michigan's defense against that kind of air raid style. Although I think they have better receivers in Texas, I think Michigan's defense matches up better against Washington uh, than they would against Texas. And so I just want to put Michigan in the best chance to win. But I think Michigan will and could beat either of those teams. Caden Powers coming in. He says, everyone's picking Alabama. It makes me feel like Michigan feel like underdogs. They seem to play better when everyone doubts them. Do you think this gives them an advantage? Uh, I do. Uh, I think it was a, the opposite last year. Everyone was just saying Michigan's in the national title game. Georgia's Ohio State. That's all we've got to worry about. Michigan's already got their ticket. They're just they're booking tickets for LA um, at uh, at the Rams Stadium. But that's not how it went down. I think Michigan got overconfident. I was overconfident. I think the players and the coaches were. I think they were. They were they're game planning for Georgia during the TCU week. Um, they didn't change anything up. Jack and I had some TCU players tell us that hey, Michigan they just played with the tendencies. When this guy was in, we knew where the ball was going. When this player went in motion, we knew the pass was going this side, and it resulted in two pick sixes. And they said they knew exactly what pass Michigan was going to. So I'm hoping that Michigan approaches this game because of the underdogs, because you know, not betting underdogs, right? But maybe public perception underdogs that they will, uh, you know, show up and, and shock the world in some ways, like they did against Ohio State two years ago, and even last year in 2022. Did this year, of course, as the favorite. Big house party. This is a funny question here. He's saying, is Jim Harbaugh stupid? Doesn't he realize that every NFL coach gets fired eventually, including himself, right? Uh, including himself, uh, which is kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't know if he's stupid. Um, you know, 
it's tough to say what the allure is to uh, Jim Harbaugh with the NFL. I, I kind of feel that um, he did what he did. He, he got out of the NFL for a reason because he didn't get along with his GM. He didn't get along with his owner. Um, he didn't feel the love, right? And he couldn't get the quarterback he wanted. He couldn't get that, right? Colin Kaepernick, Alex Smith, he, he made the three NFC Championship games with those guys, but they weren't superstar quarterbacks. So I don't necessarily know what the allure is other than winning at the highest level of football. But if you can't beat Nick Saban coming up on Monday, which I think they will, if you lose by three, four scores to Georgia, if you lose to TCU, I just think he'd want to jump across that. So I agree. If he goes back to the NFL, he'll probably, uh, you know, probably get a, a job that uh, he thinks he can win in. But I uh, bet five years from now, He'd either be, uh, you know, getting fired because they go eight and eight one year, or uh, you know, he's just not feeling the love from his new owner, whatever that may be. Let me ask you guys this question in the live chat, in the comments below. If you're watching this on Friday, what year did you become? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Who was Michigan's quarterback? I apologize. Who was Michigan's quarterback the season you became a fan? For me, it's Elvis Gerback uh, is the one. He was Michigan's starting quarterback, 89, 90. The first year I knew about him was 91, and then of course stuck around for 92. Uh, after his high school teammate Desmond Howard went on to the pros. So I'm going to know what you guys, who the quarterback was for Michigan the year you became a fan. Blue Veins with the question saying, tell me the things Michigan needs to do in order to win a national title. We saw this question earlier. So, uh, Jack, we've got the list, the list, my list of things uh, Michigan must do. I think it's something going over here because it hits this question right on the head. So here's my list. To win this game, Michigan must, okay? Um, and maybe this is not grammatically correct, but they must. They, you can't let Jalen Milrow scramble at will. If you look at his stats, and maybe pull up that stat. Do we have that one uh, now, Jack, about uh, his, his stats? We know it's somewhere. Um, Jalen Milrow uh, rushing stats. Um, go up in a second. I'll come back to it. 150. So uh, we'll talk about a little stat on Jalen Milrow here in a moment. But Michigan themselves asking 150 yards. There it is right there. So 479 of his 693 yards this year have come – when he's not scrambling, right? When he's scrambling away from, uh, you know, the defense, uh, mostly a, a, a you know, called pass play, only 214 of them came on design quarterback runs. So you just kind of see, he's getting all of his yards when he looks left. Well, he's kind of a one-read quarterback, right? Short pass, or he's going to bomb it downfield. He's not doing these intricate routes and hitting his third and fourth guy. He's just taking off and running. Michigan knows that. They've got to account for it. So don't let him scramble at will. Got the... Uh, you know, 75% of or so of his yards on scrambles this year. Michigan themselves has to get 150 yards on the ground. Uh, I've looked at a lot of what Alabama has done to lose games over the past 10 years or so. Um, it's not always the case, but uh, if you think about this kind of team, I think if Michigan can impose the will on the ground, at least get 150, that's not crazy, uh, they can and will win this game. you got to keep in mind the deep passes. Alabama, they don't respect Michigan's wide receivers. They're going to creep the lineup, and they are going to uh, try and stop the run for Michigan. Michigan's just got to take shots deep. Even if they don't complete them all the time, I still think keeping them deep is going to keep those safeties and corners a little on their toes. Open up one little space is what Donovan Edwards or Blake Corum needs to make uh, you know, a big run happen. Don't be predictable, right? Put Max Bredesen in the game and pass the damn ball for once. Put Alex Orgy in the game and don't let him run the wildcat. Like, you know, uh, have Donovan Edwards go out to the side. Don't run the screenplay to him. Have Samaj Morgan in the game. When he goes in motion, have him go back like they did with Devontae Smith at Alabama, right? Have him go motion one side or the other, stop behind the line of scrimmage, go back the other way, hit him on there, right? It's, Michigan's too predictable in some of these big games, and they certainly need to change that. And they have fun, play to win. I've said it a few times through this live show, through the shows last week. Nebraska in 2021, Wisconsin in 2021, Ohio State in 2022, Penn State in 2022, um, 2021. Go there and have some damn fun and play like there's nothing to lose because there's not anything to lose. You're going to lose, you're going to lose either way. But if you play with nothing to lose, you play to win the damn game. You coach to win like Sharon Moore did against Ohio State, and Michigan will win. They play tentative and play, uh, you know, risky. Oh, man, it's fourth and one, the 50-yard line. We're going to punt. You're going to lose the game. Take a look at this Alabama offense so far this year through 13 games. They are 12-1. and one. Number 53-ranked uh, team in the country is according to yards. So this isn't like a vintage Tua uh, or, uh, or Jalen Hurts Alabama offense. 59th in the country at 228 passing yards a game. 172.7 rushing yards a game, tied for 46, and then 35.1 points per game, um, 18th in the country. Now, over to the defense. This Alabama team has had, um, I think it was six, I have to look, we have to pull up the, uh, the, uh, um, the record at one point, but uh, they've had a lot of close games uh, so far this year. They've only, that's the stat, they've only had two games this year against Power 5 teams that they won by double digits, and that's kind of crazy. The 19th ranked defense in the country, I think that's their strength. Uh, but plenty of quarterbacks, Jaden Daniels, Quinn Ewers, uh, the 
multifaceted quarterback running back attack from Auburn have put up yards on this team. Now, Michigan's receivers, if they are going to win this game, a couple of these guys or A.J. Barner has got to make some plays. I'm not sure if it's going to be Roman Wilson. I'm not sure if it's going to be Cornelius Johnson. Two guys I like. I like Colson Loveland. I like A.J. Barner. I like Donovan Edwards to make plays because uh, Terry Arnold, Kool-Aid McKinnon Street, they're going to shut down Roman Wilson and Cornelius Johnson, I think, unless Michigan becomes very creative in the play-calling trees and the, the route trees. Let me ask you guys the question, who will lead Michigan in catches against Alabama? I think it's Loveland. I really think it is. Um, I think Jim Harbaugh has proven in the past that he is kind of a tight end whisperer, which I'll talk about later in the live show video coming up for you this weekend. Harbaugh, the tight end whisperer. I think it's going to be Colson Loveland. Let me know what you guys think in the comments or in the live chat. Here we go from Michael. Is Michigan's playoff experience an advantage over Alabama? It's got to be, right? Jalen Miller doesn't know what it's like to be in a playoff game. Jermaine Burton doesn't know. Kool-Aid McKinstry's not been in the playoffs, right? Uh, Dallas Turner hasn't been a playoff quarterback. Now, they just won a playoff atmosphere game against Georgia in the SC Championship in Atlanta. But Michigan's won you know, at Penn State this year. Ohio State without your head coach, right? No one in the history of college football has faced the adversity without losing a game that this Michigan football team has. And they've got that bad taste in their mouth of Georgia, which maybe nothing they were going to do about that one. Such a bad taste, taste for TCU. I think this team is laser, laser focused on beating Alabama. And then after that, they'll celebrate for half a night. On to the natty. Big house bro saying, uh, saw your tweet about Sa Saban. Kind of crazy. So, so this will come up in the live chat. Jack, we didn't, I don't, I didn't pull the, the, the tweet, did I or did I? No, I didn't. Um, oh, Jack's got it for me on a nice little graph. And look at you, Jack. That's what they call you, super producer Jack. I tweeted this out, uh, replying to Josh Page. He's like, what's one college football opinion that'll get you, you know, roasted, yada, yada? Mine was that Nick Saban's won seven national titles. He's got a really, really lucky in winning those national titles. Now, he performs when they get into the playoff, but he can only have one, two, or three of them. I think 20, uh, what's the year? 2015 is the only year I think he really won it. No questions asked because look at these, uh, these ones right here. Lucky Nick Saban. Let's go to 2003 when he's with LSU. Okay? LSU played Oklahoma, beat them, but the number one team in the country was USC, and because of the BCS formulas, USC dropped number three in the computers and all that, and they didn't get in the national title game. So you didn't have to play the best teams. Okay, cool there. Then you go back forward six years, first national title game at Alabama. Colt McCoy, you know, legendary quarterback there. I think Texas wins that game. He gets hurt. True freshman has to come in, and Alabama wins that game. Two years later, they lose to LSU. They don't win their division in the SEC. They don't win the SEC. And because of a last uh, game of the year loss by Oklahoma State, they sneak back in. They get a rematch against LSU. Boom, win a national title. Probably shouldn't have uh, won that one. How about the next year? Back-to-back -back titles, 2012. Well, remember who number one team in the country was that year? It was Ohio State. But they were on probation from the Jim Trestle and Terrell Pryor tattoo gate. They couldn't get in there. So number three, Alabama, gets in the title game against an overrated uh, Notre Dame team with Manti Teo and Lene Kikoi. Didn't get it right up. Okay, 2017. Didn't win the division. Right? Lost to Auburn. Auburn's in the, in the SEC title game. Auburn loses to Georgia. Georgia goes there. And then Alabama gets, a, re gets a, a shot against Georgia. They beat them despite not winning their own division. And then 2020, like COVID season, they played at the Ohio State team that only five regular season games. Alabama was the only team that wasn't testing. I'm not sure if anybody even should have been, but uh, you know, a lot of teams lost games because of uh, you know, COVID, the positive tests and all this different stuff. So just trying to take that and just demystify Nick Saban for a second, right? He hasn't been perfect. Seven national titles, it's tough to argue. I know that. But it's not like all those were, you know, front, you know, start to finish, just amazing teams, et cetera, et cetera, right? Every one of those years, I think, has a loss in it, right? LSU, 2009, I can't remember. But uh, I think that one was undefeated. But 11, 12, 20, they, they were undefeated in 20. But you know, there's, there's a lot of circumstances that have led to have him uh, having this title. And uh, other teams, right? I don't want to say Ohio State, but I think Urban Meyer probably has one or two more national titles if he gets the right bounces either at Florida or at Ohio State over the years. 2012 his first year, 2015. They were probably the best team in the country both those years. Let me know where you guys are watching from here on our Michigan Football Report mailbag. Shout out your city down in the comments or in the live chat. I'll give a few shout-outs here in the live show in a moment, but let me know where you are watching from. We're in Dallas. By uh, lunchtime tomorrow, I will be in San Diego, and then uh, coming up on Sunday, I will be heading up to uh, Santa Monica, then to go to the Rose Bowl on Monday. Let me know where you are watching from. Perrysburg, Ohio, from Corey Dean. I've been there. I spent a, a week there one night. Uh, Bill Graves with the questions using hashtag Michigan 
Do you think special teams will be a deciding factor? If so, who is the advantage? Well, and it's tough. I mean, with Michigan right now, this season, um, it's tough to say it'll be a deciding factor for them. And if it is, I think Michigan would have the advantage, right? So I'll tell you a couple reasons why. One, Samaj Morgan, right? Could have been the difference, right? That was a bad Iowa team, but that was really the only spark they had early on in that game that returned down to about the four or five yard line. His first punt return as a college player took it down to the five yard line. Okay, that's one. So I think that's an advantage over Alabama in the return game now with Samaj Morgan uh, emerging. But how about James Turner? All right. Uh, absolute ice in his veins down the stretch of this season. Penn State, Maryland, Ohio State game. He was absolutely Stunning. It made, it made you kind of forget in some regards about uh, about Jake Moody, right? So James Turner, Samaj Morgan, I think Michigan would have the uh, advantage of special teams. And over the last three or four years, right, three years specifically, Jay Harbaugh is a special teams coach. Michigan's the best special teams, I think, in all of college football.